name's Jill. I'm a New York Times recipe tester, stylist, and recipe writer. And I do all my cooking right here in my New York City apartment. In my tiny little kitchen. In this week's New York Times Magazine, our dining editor, Pete Wells, is writing a new column about his son, Dexter, who's four years old and loves to eat, but more importantly, loves to cook. Dexter has an allergy to egg and he can't eat ice cream. So Pete has always made Dexter sorbets, but he really, really wants ice cream. So one time they were making a tangerine sorbet, Dexter insisted that his dad pour in some cream and their sorbet transformed into sherbet. So what's the difference? Sorbet and sherbet are fruit juices that have been frozen. So you have the French sorbet, the Italians say sorbet though, and the British say sherbet. But around the 1900s, the British and Americans started adding milk and a little bit of thickener like gelatin or corn syrup. So today, sherbet is sorbet but with added milk in it. Cousins, but not the same. So now we're going to talk about tangerines. They are in season right now. It's winter. So this is kind of perfect timing. And we're going to start actually with our gelatin. We're going to take a half a teaspoon gelatin and we're going to put it in a pan with two tablespoons cold water. If you put hot water right on gelatin, it'll get really stringy. And the instruction says to just turn your back on it, meaning leave it alone. You need about five tangerines, about two and a quarter pounds. Did I mention I can juggle, sort of? And you're going to use a grater. I would say that the microplane is one of America's best contributions to cuisine in the last 25 years or so. One thing you have to know when you grate rind is not to go over the same area. You're going to start getting down to that white pith. So you really want to move it around. It takes a little while, but don't go over the same area. You don't want to just kind of keep going like that. You're going to get white spots. That is our zest. And now we're going to start juicing the oranges. Cut them in half and five. I think a montage is in order. And one more. There's our juice. We're going to measure out one and a half cups. And now we're going to add our zest into the juice. Done. Stir it around a little. And now we're going to go back to our gelatin on the stove top. We want to heat it up just a little and you want that graininess to go away. Add a half a cup of sugar, one fourth teaspoon of salt, and the tangerine juice and zest. And just stir it in a figure eight pattern until it's completely dissolved. We want it to be a body temp, so we're gonna let it go a little bit longer. Hmm, that's perfect. Done. We're gonna transfer it to a container and put it in the refrigerator. Okay, so now it's nice and cold. Wasn't in there that long, maybe 20 minutes. We're gonna quickly strain it so you get all that zest out. And I like to use a big ladle to push out the zest. It goes faster. We now have our strained juice and now we need a half a cup of cream. And now it's time to combine them and spin them. So I might have a tiny kitchen and I may not have a dishwasher, but I do have an ice cream machine. I had to pull it down from way up there. Most people don't have this. So I'm going to show you three different ways to make sherbet. Using the ice cream maker is the first way. First, I'm going to start by removing the canister from the freezer. It needs to be really frozen solid. It's very cold. Plug it in, place the churner in the middle, and put the top on. Pour the juice in. And then you're going to pour the cream in. You need a, a cold spot for this. If the kitchen's too warm, if the oven's on, it's not going to freeze very well. I'm going to put it in the refrigerator, your space, because it's a little hot out here with the lights. There. When it starts to sound like it's really struggling, that's when you know that it's done. At this point, you have to move pretty fast. Take this out, transfer it, pat it in, get all those air bubbles out. Bring it down. Good ice cream etiquette, and this is really important when you're looking for a gelato shop. Ice cream should always be just to the surface here, and when you're scooping it, it should always be scooped from the top down. It should not go across like this, because the more air that's exposed to it, the worse it is for the ice cream. Then take a piece of plastic wrap and push it right down to cover it. Let the plastic wrap touch it and then pop it in the freezer. That was the first method, this is the second. I'm gonna take just a big pan and we're going to add the juice and the mixture right into that pan. Tangerine juice and then pour in the cream and just give it a little stir. 
beautiful. You're going to make lots of room in your freezer for this thing. So about two hours later, it's done. And this is essentially how you make granita. And we're just going to scratch it like this. Break it with a fork. It's not ideal because you're not whipping any air into it, but it still creates the right flavor, the right taste. It requires a little arm strength. So um, trying to figure out how to make it a little fluffier, I uh, decided to pulse it a little bit in this food processor. It, it worked perfectly. So if you have a food processor, to take it from just good to better, quickly pulse it and whip air into it. So I'm just going to transfer it all really quickly because it's melting. Close the top and then I'll pulse it a bit and then I'll really hold it down. Check out that texture. I mean, that's perfect sherbet texture. So now I'm going to quickly transfer this. It's melting, especially with all that friction. It's melting. Again, bang it flat. Cover it with plastic wrap. Throw it in the freezer. Once it's, ugh, once it's been in the freezer for a bit, and solidify it a little bit more, it's ready to serve. You could also serve it right away. Scoop it out, put it in a cute little ice cream bowl. Yum. And there you go. If you want to be real Italian, you could put it into half of a tangerine like that. It tastes like an orange Julius or a push pop. Is that what they're called? Push pops? It's a pretty simple process. So go out and make some sherbet. If you have an ice cream maker, that's the ideal, but it's not necessary. And I think it even has some vitamin C in it, so it's healthy.